What separates the beginners and the professionals in scratch video game making is the movement. Whether or not the movement of the character is smooth. Well, what do you mean smooth? Well, beginners always do this. They go in the motion blocks and they say, okay, I want the cat to move when I press the space bar. So they'll do something like this. And this is really clunky. And the cat only moves in the direction it's already facing. So unless you want to adjust the way with like arrow keys with the direction it's facing, it's just always gonna move in that direction. So let me show you a more professional way to do this. So separate this, we're gonna still use the move 10 steps, but we're gonna wrap it in both a forever loop and an if statement. So we're gonna say forever check if you're pressing the space bar. So we'll need to go into sensing. We'll grab, not the touching mouse pointer, we're looking for key space pressed right there. Then we'll do the move 10 steps. We'll need to put a start flag on that. There we go. So this is a much smoother version of the code because it's checking to see if the space key is pressed, then moving. But you still can't control the direction. That's where, that's where X and Y become very valuable. Instead of using move 10 steps, the professional scratch coder will not use that block. They'll actually go into the motion and they'll use change X, not set X, because be careful, set X and change X are dangerously close to, together and they're very different in what they do. So now instead of pressing the space bar, I'll press the right arrow. Let's go ahead and put the cat there. Now when I press the right arrow, he moves. Wow, it's so smoothly. And we'll need to repeat this code block. Let's go ahead and throw this away. We'll need to repeat it do, or duplicate it for the left arrow. Left arrow, and then this will be the negative, so minus 10 steps. There we go. So the, the X changes the position going horizontally. As it goes positive, it moves to the right. Negative goes to the left. So let's go ahead and do that for the Y position as well. So we'll duplicate this twice. Okay, this, this code block is getting pretty large. I'll show you how to save this in just a second. So now we wanna do the up arrow and we won't be changing the X, we'll be changing the Y by a positive value and we'll be changing the Y by a negative value to make the cat go down. There we go, this is negative 10 and this is, oh, hold on, we need the up and the down arrow. There we go. So this looks correct. I think we have all of the code. And check that out. Now, how do you make it so the cat faces the direction that you're pointing? Well, that has to do with motion as well and point in direction. So let's go look point in direction. We'll just go ahead and add this in here. So direction, when you click on it, direction 90 is to the right. We'll need another one of those point in direction. So the left will be this direction, which is negative 90. I know it's a little strange that they use negative 90. Uh, okay, so what will this will do is the cat will flip upside down. That's okay. You actually can set the rotation style right here. You can do it in where my image actually is. You can change the direction style over there, but I like to hard code it into the code by setting rotation style right here to um, don't rotate left, right. I think left, right will actually work correctly. There it goes. So that looks pretty good. We can add these point in directions to the up arrow. Well, not really, unless you want him to point up, which you can, but then the left right rotation won't work. That's another story. You're just going to have to play around with these variables. Now I told you, you can save this code because you're probably going to use this in all of your games, well, many of your games. How do you do that? Just go down to the bottom, the backpack, click on the backpack, pack, and then drag your code in there. There, now when you're working on your next game, you can just go in the backpack, drag it out, and you have that code. Well, you don't want two versions of it, but that way you don't have to recode this many, many times. Anyways, that is a professional way to move your sprite in Scratch.